Hello everybody and welcome back. As my regular followers will know, I'm working on a series concerning Prince Charles. Those of you who have missed the previous videos on Charles can scroll back to my earlier videos or you can go to my website and watch the videos back to back, plus some additional material. The website is completely free, there's no membership fee or anything else. <laughs> You will also be able to read some of my creative work and watch two videos on Diana's last days and her death. Anyway, like I said, today we are starting on Prince Charles's friends and girlfriends, and this will likely span more than one video. Usually when we talk about friends of the royals, we immediately start thinking about Prince William and Prince Harry and Beatrice and Eugenie, in other words, the younger set, but we seldom talk or maybe even think about the older royals and their friends. So it's a rather interesting endeavor. So let's go. Now we all know that the royals do come in close contact with celebrities and obviously get to know them. But we can't always say that any of these celebrities are close friends of the royals. However, I have been told that Rod Stewart and Prince Charles are indeed close friends and have been for years. And when I looked it up, I found that Rod was ambassador for the Prince's Trust. And in 2008, he even performed at Charles's 60th birthday party. But obviously, the royals are not just friends with celebrities, but a number of people from their own let's call it elite set. Now one of those people is indeed Norton Natchbull, formerly Lord Brayburn and now the current Earl Mountbatten of Burma. Norton Natchbull was sent to Gordonstown to keep Prince Charles company in the school that he, Prince Charles, hated and was so terribly unhappy at. When Norton Natchbull, or let's call him Lord Mountbatten, when his daughter Alexandra got married to IT entrepreneur Tom Cooper at Romsey Abbey, it was Prince Charles who gave her way, stepping in for his old school friend, who was too ill and frail to do it himself. Norton Louis Philip Natchbull was born in October 1947 and was first known as Lord Romsey, then the Lord Brayburn, and now inherited and became the third Earl Mountbatten of Burma. Of course, that is because he is the grandson of Lord Louis Mountbatten. And Princess Alice, who was the second daughter of Queen Victoria, was indeed his maternal great-great-grandmother. Through his mother, second Countess Mountbatten of Burma, and Charles's father, Prince Philip, Norton and Charles are second cousins. Prince Charles was also best man when Norton married Penelope Natchbull only two months after Norton's grandfather, Lord Mountbatten, was assassinated in an IRA bomb explosion. Norton Natchbull left his wife after 31 years of marriage, but she remained very close to the Queen and Prince Philip, and was indeed Prince Philip's carriage driving partner. Earl Mountbatten of Burma, however, returned home when his health started suffering, and although he first moved into a converted shed, eventually his wife Penelope allowed him back into the home. Now Prince Charles is godfather to Earl Mountbatten of Burma's son, who is now the Lord Brayburn, while the late Princess Diana was godmother to their daughter Alexandra. Another of Charles's friends is said to be Baron Piers von Westenholz, father of Violet and Victoria. And it's not sure how they met or where they met or how long they've been friends for, but the von Westenholz families and Charles, Diana and their sons had spent numerous holidays together, in particular skiing holidays, because Piers von Westenholz was a former Olympic skier. Even after Diana's death, these skiing holidays continued, and Piers's daughters, 
Violet and Victoria obviously became very friendly with William and Harry. It is also known that when Charles and Camilla saved an update of the Castle of May, the Queen Mother's small castle on the North Sea, the designer was Piers von Westenholz. The Baron also helped decorate the Dumfries house for Prince Charles, etc, etc. And they have a shared interest in antiques, Baron von Westenholz being an antiques dealer. Another friend of Prince Charles's was Hugh von Katzum, who died in 2013. Hugh was one of Charles's absolute best friends. They knew one another from university and eventually their sons, Hugh had four and obviously Prince Charles too, became very close friends. And as we know, they are still friends. I'm not sure about Harry though, but William are still friends with the von Katzens. Another noteworthy friend of Prince Charles is Nicholas Soames. They have been friends for more than 30 years. In 1960, Soames, who was then 12, found himself fishing in a Scottish river right alongside Prince Charles. <laughs> in 1970 to 1972, he also served as Charles's equerry. Nicholas Soames was also the grandson of Sir Winston Churchill and was one of the guests at Charles's stag party before his wedding to Diana. Soames was one of Prince Charles's friends who was of the opinion that the marriage was, and I quote, mismatched, doomed, utterly doomed. Prince Charles was also best man at Nicholas's wedding in 1981. However, Sir Nicholas Soames was also very outspoken after Charles and Diana's divorce, but recently sort of apologised for it, yet he is still, to this day, firmly in Charles's camp and loyal to the royal family. Other friends of Prince Charles include Alan Bathurst, the Palmer Tonkinsons and Jacob Rothschild. However, Prince Charles's friendships were not all as wholesome and relatively trouble-free as those I have already mentioned. A report into the handling of the case of Bishop Peter Ball, a priest convicted of molesting more than a dozen young men, was published in 2019. And the report stated that Prince Charles's friendship with Ball was misguided and could have been interpreted as trying to lobby in Ball's favour. Peter Ball was formerly Bishop of Lewis and Gloucester, and he was convicted in 2015 of, and I'm going to say this in code, <laughs> um, he was convicted in 2015 of SA, essaying 18 teen boys and young men. The first investigation started in 1992, too, however, when a monk training under him accused him of several lewd acts, and although there was enough evidence to take the matter to trial, it was decided to give him a caution. There was, however, an understanding that Ball would resign from his post, which he did, but four months later the then Archbishop of Canterbury wrote to Ball about his cautious return to ministry. And less than two years later, he was back at work with no restrictions. A second investigation was launched in 2012 and Ball pleaded guilty and he received a 32-month sentence. However, the spotlight fell on Prince Charles for his relationship with Peter Ball in the period between the first investigation in 1992 and Ball being reinstated in the church. Prince Charles was, however, and we have to be fair, so let's mention this. Prince Charles was, however, not the only influential person Ball formed friendships with. He was also friendly with Margaret Thatcher, senior judges, and headmasters at schools. He also preached at Sandringham from time to time. However, as I said, the first investigation was in 1992 
but in 1994, Prince Charles sent his private secretary to Lambeth Palace to inquire about Ball's status when Charles learned that Ball had not been reinstated yet. And then Charles wrote to Ball saying, I wish I could do more. I feel so desperately strongly about the monstrous wrong that have been done to you and the way you have been treated. It is appalling that the Archbishop has gone back on what he told me, etc., etc. Prince Charles even bought Ball a house to live in, using the Duchy of Cornwall to purchase the property and then rented it to Ball and his twin brother from 1995 to 2011. However, after Ball's conviction in 2012, an independent inquiry into how the case was handled was again launched. Prince Charles submitted a letter to the inquiry saying that he had been deceived for a long time about the true nature of Ball and denied trying to influence the outcome of the investigation. However, the panel, although they did not find Charles guilty of anything in particular, was not that easily fooled. And in the report they state, his actions and those of his staff, talking about Prince Charles, could have been interpreted as expressions of support for Peter Ball and had the potential to influence the actions of the church. Regardless of what the inquiry found or what Charles had to say about his relationship with Ball, the truth is that it was Ball's advice he sought when his marriage with Diana started to unravel. It was also Ball who later encouraged him over his relationship with Camilla. And both Charles and Camilla were so grateful that he was invited to their wedding in 2005. It was also Ball who delivered the address at the funeral of Camilla's father, Major Bruce Shand, in 2006. Prince Charles and Peter Ball both admired the writer Lawrence van der Post. However, they had other things in common. And the biggest surprise comes when we start looking into how Ball was propelled into the royal circle. And for that, two people were responsible, namely Willie Booth, a former chaplain at Westminster School, and the other one, was Jimmy Savile. So this is as far as I'm taking it today. In the next video we'll look at Charles's relationship with Savile and Lawrence van der Post and if the video is not too long by then we'll start working on all the girlfriends Prince Charles had in his lifetime. So ladies and gentlemen hang on to your hats this is going to become even more interesting. Okay, guys and girls, until we meet on the next video, please take good care of yourselves. From me, bye.